Good afternoon, esteemed friends, dear participants in our today's conference, dear guests. Let us begin the work of the fifth anniversary conference aimed after Mr. Zinoviev, an outstanding great Russian philosopher, writer, and we can list the spheres in which he is outstanding and is valued. So let me first of all congratulate you on the beginning of our work and I'm passing the floor for человека без которого наверное мы не смогли бы организовать замечательное такое мероприятие и собрать столько гостей это руководитель агентства МИА Россия сегодня Дмитрий Константинович Киселев прошу вас пожалуйста Дмитрий Константинович Дорогая Ольга Мироновна, дорогие друзья, наши гости из России и из-за рубежа. Я поздравляю вас с этим ярким событием. Стране и миру нужна мозговая атака, которая изменит то дурное направление, в котором движется планета. Всем становится от этого только тревожнее. Я считаю, что тот ресурс, который resource which was left for us by Mr. Zinoviev is a very good way out of this uh, clinch. Son of the painter who actually painted the intellectual life of uh, all the people. Uh, pilot, combat pilot, who assaulted all the cruel paradoxes which связываются человечеству человек огромной внутренней свободы который завещал все это и о нам название нашей конференции русская трагедия и русская мечта Трагедии, о трагедии мы знаем много. Само включается. As we know a lot about the tragedies, about a lot of Russian tragedies, starting from the wrongful political system and ending with vodka. But we know little about vodka, and it is even difficult to. Но именно этим и займется сегодняшняя конференция. Это дерзкий план. This is a very ambitious plan, ambitious intention. This topic certainly is very relevant, and I may quote the last words said by Mr. Zinoviev when he passed away. He said, "We need utopia, dream, and hope." This is. A great thing, and if people do not invent uh, utopia, they will never survive. We need a fairy tale. It is very important for people to have uh, some ambiguous, some fog to believe in. No. Uh, the fairy tale is also very important, and let us not understand that literally. So we are not moving in the direction of a fog. We are not calling anyone in, to follow us in the direction of a fog. But ideals and criteria, certainly that's what we need. Even if we call that a fairy tale with a bit of irony, we need a star which would guide us, some polar star. And um, I wish you every success in search for this direction, in search for these uh, guidelines. What Mr. Zinoviev said would be a utopia, and I wish you every uh. Dear friends, this year is even more interesting for us because this is when Russia Sivodnia News Agency established Zinoviev Club, which started its work since June, and uh, it was founded by uh, the news agency and biographical. Institute of Zinoviev, and uh, this conference is held in the framework of this club. It's been co-chaired by Mr. Kiselyov, who has just spoken, and Ms. Zinoviev. She was a friend, 
and a widow of Mr. Zinoyev was next to him throughout his life, and I do think that uh, credit goes to her for what Mr. Zinovy did. Ms. Zinovya, you're welcome. I will not start with a fairy tale. I will start with some simple, sober report and account on what we managed to do and what has not been done yet. Author of the book Russian Tragedy knew the depths and the pain of our people. And being real son of our people, he found himself in the center of the crossfire, which was people. Different secret services, propaganda and counter-propaganda, spent enormous amounts of money to fight Mr. Zinoviev. Equal three billion dollars according to the pragmatic statistics the investigations the multi-decade uh, uh, monitoring five um, assassination attempts destruction of documents falsifications framings uh, then extinction of the life space the Exemption and destruction of uh, dozens of thousands of books from all the libraries. Anti-Soviet and anti-Western hysteria. This is all true of him. Mr. Zinoviev acquired uh, the large-scale uh, fame by the end of the 20th century, just like Solzhenitsyn did and Sakharov did because they deserved that as the scientists and writers, but this is, was also a result of the global standoff between the two systems, and they were very costly brands of Cold Wars. But Mr. Zinov has always been a maverick and individualist who never played other people's games, and all the enormous efforts and means were spent on the taming and elimination of one person, a Russian writer, a Russian thinker, philosopher who actually impeded these people with his daring flight of the thought. Despite anything, he came true as an uh, irresistible thinker, person for all the times who has become legend when he was still alive. Mr. Zinoviev was unique and exceptional in his lifelong battle for our country, in his labor in the name of the great truth about our epoch, about our age. He wanted that his books, that his articles were belong to the people, but at the same time he resisted all the attempts of all the authorities to take advantage of him, to use him. Mr. Zinov is the very first Russian post-Marxist who created a new scientific tank and uh, the Russian social theory. And he played the same role for the Russian culture, for the Russian philosophy uh, as uh, Alexander Pushkin. What means would be needed in order to create, not to destroy, but to create a personality of such a skill? The meaning and role of the lifelong deed, noble deed of Mr. Zinoviev, is a real for the current generation, which should not be subordinated and subjected to the brain's sterilization, which is imposed by the uh, Western values. The creative legacy and heritage of this great son of Russia, this is the uh, eternal value which belongs to my country. And I do believe that uh, the full collection of uh, books and articles of Zinoyev should be published for all the libraries of my country, unfortunately. Um, only 11 vol volumes of his collection were published in the editing house AST, which was later on destroyed. My Russian dream is to create an... <laughs> Uh, which will tell us about the intellectual and creative heritage of this Russian Socrates. And we are going to call this multimedia museum a Xenoteca, or Xenotech. This museum, by all its uh, content and technical opportunities and potential, will become a really 
museum of Russian tragedy and Russian um, museum, uh, a Russian uh, dream, an intellectual arc of our country, which will uh, pass on to the new generation the wisdom of the Russian civilization. Zinatech should be built on the territory of Mr. Zinatech. It should be timed to the 100th anniversary of uh, his birth. On the eve of the 70th uh, anniversary of our victory over fascism, which was contributed to by the captain of the guards, pilot Alexander Zonov, I call on you, my motherland, please use on a large-scale basis uh, the uh, creative heritage of your outstanding son and to handle it wisely. But our Russian tragedy is continued. And it is continued because of the lack of consolidation of the Russian elite around the main objective, the development of Russia. In fact, we lack national elite and modern Russian elites. They stand at uh, Camprador positions uh, as far as they propagate uh, other people's economic and uh, political theories, which were imposed in 1990s in the period of uh, the humanitarian and intellectual intervention of Russia by a pandemic of the printed production of the so-called Soros funds, uh, Carnegie funds, and other uh, supporters of the ideology of the open society. The consciousness of the modern Russian elites is under the siege of the imposed Western theories and concepts, and therefore they cannot create their own national theory of their own science. And therefore our elite is only uh, contributing to strengthening of the interests of the West. It contributes to the weakening of Russia and its subsequent colonization and enslavery. An absolute dream which we lost it for so long is that Russian intellectuals overcome the discords that it is not pulling the blanket on its own and is not striving to uh, cut certain pieces from the common goods. And at this very difficult historical moment of the country, bringing Russia back to the history we knew, we knew it, a new intelligentsia, new intellectuals, a new ideology of a consolidation of the Russian society. Therefore, I suggest that we all try at least from time to time, to think like Zinoviev did. Let us today think and speak emphatically and explicitly. Thank you so much. Now we have one more very important resolution which was taken by the Zinoviev Fund by the Biographical Institute, I'm sorry. Thank you. By the resolution of our Biographical Institute, we award a medal of the 19th anniversary since the birth of Mr. Zinoviev to the freest person of our civilization, Edward Snowden. Today we actually failed to hand this medal to him personally, but I'm sure that sooner or later we'll adapt our protocols in order to invite him, to award him with this medal and a diploma which says, for his brave deed challenging the global Lefefon in the name of uh, bringing back the consciousness of the mankind in the spirit of Alexander Zinoviev. And to end this our introduction, I would like to pass the floor to the Dean of the Global Processes uh, Department. Ilya Vyacheslav, please. Esteemed Mr. Kisilov, esteemed Ms. Zinoyev, and dear colleagues, including the young ones,
who are present here in this room, I would like to perform this responsible mission. Fifteen years ago, Mr. Zinoviev. Worked a lot. So he uh, worked as a professor of the Moscow State University. He worked with um, heart and enthusiasm, and his last works were on and very really important uh, his thoughts works were dedicated about uh, to global his, nature. Uh, uh, as you know, as you may know, he, he, he was well aware the of the globaliz globalization processes, uh, uh, understanding their contradictions, knowing that they can be used to. to uh, important uh, social and political issues, he and he considered that process, as, process as one of the stages of social um, evolution of uh, society. Uh, society. Alexander Zinov uh, you know, uh, paid a lot of attention to the, the global scene, global um, and it is, it important is important that 10 years ago, ago on the 250th anniversary of uh, Moscow State University, Alexander Zinov was rewarded with the highest award, the star for the dedication to the uh, truth, the of and the I was fortunate to meet uh, Professor Zinoyev more than once then, and we discussed uh, issues that were of global nature, and today some of his prophecies have become true, and now uh, we, uh, see, uh, we see now in 2014 the changes in the global economy that um, confirm what uh, he said uh, uh, what he warned us against. Uh, uh, 2014 is to some extent can be called the Zinoviev year. It was said that the Zinoviev Club was set up by Mia Rossi-Sivodnia, and so we have the presentation of this new and of this new uh, the uh, body under the uh, Moscow State MSU University and the International Study and Research Center uh, started uh, here in the International uh, Information Center Rossi Sevodnia on the 25th of April. We um, had the pre presentation here and in the Great Hall of Moscow State University. And to, uh, now, every t uh, second week, we have uh, presentations and lectures by members of the Inovive Club and uh, representatives of the Biographical uh, Club. Um, and it is uh, frequently visited by young people because they, it's they who have future. Uh, it's on them depends how the future will uh, develop and, and how we use the legacy of Alexander. Alexander Zinoviev. Today, I would like to um, pass uh, to hand this memorable uh, award, uh, which is uh, usually given to those who contributed to global studies in the world. So, this medal is a, uh, is handed by the Global Studies um, Association, and Moscow rector Rukt of the Moscow State University is head of that. And uh, Professor Sadovnichi not only passed his best regards and signed this uh, the certificate, but we also would like to say that the decision was supported by the academic uh, council and as usual pathetically and brilliantly um, she spoke and uh, on this important occasion we would like remembering professor Zinoviev would like to say that uh, he was really lucky with uh, Olga Mironovna uh, with uh, so, so such a great number of co-thinkers and followers and uh, um, Stu fellow students, he is still uh, he is still with us, looking from above and uh, being happy for the achievements of his colleagues, friends, relatives, and co-thinkers. Dear Olga Mironovna, permit me to hand this uh, award to you for uh, contribu uh, co con for your contribution to s uh, global studies from our. Association of Global Studies, and we wish you strength and uh, persistence and luck in uh, continuing this very important work together for the sake of our uh, motherland, Russia, and for the sake of the whole world. And so, dear friends, now we pass to the working stage of our conference. I'd like to say that uh, the setting up of the Zinoyev Club by Mia Rossi-Sevodny is very symbolic and 
uh, just a couple of days ago, there was one of the sessions, um, sessions of the Baldur Club closed that and that was a high profile uh, event it is important that such a fora of the club type uh, that give um, platform for consideration for free discussion free flow ideas is important and uh, uh, speech by uh, president putin at the valdai club um, didn't uh, didn't leave anyone indifferent and the most the point of criticism that uh, that uh, those on the right and to the left allow themselves is, is important. It's natural uh, that we challenge the Leviathans, but what we will rely on? Do we have resources with which we will be able to lead? Uh, and that's the main questions that we ask, and that was uh, stayed open after the Valde Club. So in, in our sessions, and in particular during uh, today's session, we will speak, we will try to answer the question about resources positively. In particular, Russian philosophy is, exists. That's something that we have. And there are quite few, uh, a few countries in the world that have, that can boast their national philosophy. So Russia is one of those rare countries that can boast its national philosophy, uh, philosophical school. Professor Zinoviev. The subject of philosophy, sometimes it went through metaphor, and Zeno spoke about that through metaphor. He said, looking at a picture by uh, on an artist, we should understand that the picture is something, is the thought of an artist that became an action. And if we want to understand that, we need to reconstruct the action and we need to reconstruct the thought. And that was the that was so particular about this um, metaphor. When we see something as a pack, uh, picture, we need to understand that this is a fruit, a result of certain thought. That's a result of certain activity. And we, if we want to understand it, then we need to get deep in philosophy. We should study it because philosophy is uh, thinking, thinking about a uh, world, how people c c got to that thinking and creating. And we're we should be moving in these two aspects, uh, in thinking about thinking and what Zinovi did in the science of uh, logics. He did more than anyone else uh, during the past uh, 150 years. Zin it, it was Zinoviev who created sociology, that is the knowledge about modern world and structure of society, about presented the picture of the world. And um, we'll move today in these two aspects thinking uh, thinking about thinking and about the world as it is. We have several pa panel discussion with the main uh, speaker, uh, members uh, of uh, the Zinoviev Club uh, will be the main uh, key speakers and there are other contributors to the discussion. Their uh, presentation will take up to 50, uh, five minutes. And besides that, we have a Q&A session or a discussion comments from the floor. Uh, you're welcome to ask questions to the panel discu uh, discussants. Uh, express your ideas. Be brief up to two minutes in the following way. Either opposing something that was said by the panelists, uh, saying, I'm against, I d disagree, or adhering to what was, was said without elaborating on, this, uh, on the thesis that was pre uh, presented. So now, if the video is ready, then I would like to ask, to ask the, mem the first uh, member of the, um, the first speaker on the panel, uh, Timofey uh, Sergeyev. The Russian tra uh, tragedy as the main mechanism of uh, Russian hist of global history in the 20th century. We could uh, call it differently the Russian lesson of history. The main theme of the uh, paper is uh, thematization and uh, raise the is issue. Uh, during the whole 20th century, the Western uh, philosophy said, asserted that after the victory of the Bolsheviks, Russia fell out of history, but uh, now she is to, uh, Russia is to return to that. Actually, 
actually many uh, nations ran ahead of that, but uh, they believed that even during the 19th century, uh, Russia fell, uh, had uh, fallen out of that and was lagging behind. But from my point of view, that uh, that's um, uh, counted to the uh, true. Russia was not only part of the global um, historical processes during the 20th century, but it was right in the epicenter, uh, the, the main platform of all historical processes, because Russia was the first one uh, where it is in uh, Russia that history for the first time became the subject of artificial attitude. And it is in Russia that during the 20th century that the main trends of European civilization uh, absorbed old, um, old uh, trends of civilization. The whole crisis of the West as it was seen on the verge of the, 20, uh, of the 19th and 20th century as it was seen by the, such thinkers as Mike, Marx, uh, Nietzsche and Spengler. Virtually, the role of Russia in the global historical process uh, found its embodiment in two global wars, uh, and the second one uh, actually evolved on the center, uh, on uh, the Russian territory. It uh, reached its apex in the uh, crisis of state as a uh, civilized institution, and its virtual existence um, became very doubtful. So uh, we uh, the, the, the 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 role uh, we see, we saw that it was mm, uh, it was developing through uh, bourgeois revolution and then continuation of all European revolutionary process and in Russia we saw that that uh, that the faith in God was replaced by the faith in uh, secular uh, ideas and uh, then ended up with religious war that we call, uh, that uh, took the form of uh, repressions. We know that the whole world now is, wa um, is worshipping the idols of uh, total democracy. Um, that is the role uh, of uh, and the, uh, the role of uh, the main uh, raci uh, racist project that ever launched by the British racism um, is uh, cannot be underestimated. I meant uh, German Nazism. Back in the uh, uh, the. Uh, economics that uh, took place in the 19th century, 20th century, uh, late of uh, 20th century. That was the, the lower part of social structure that underwent uh, transformations through ec uh, industrial economics and uh, industrial revolutions uh, and laid uh, the foundation for some academic and scientific um, discoveries. And uh, its uh, top, uh, top part social structure transformed via um, academic uh, 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 scientific uh, thinking. The, uh, the, uh, in, uh, the tragedy of the Russian is such that Russia truly undertook uh, its um, uh, its uh, role uh, in the uh, European uh, civilization of the new times in the 20th century. Nobody is uh, following us yet because nobody is capable of understanding us yet. But we think that in the foreseeable future, when other nations experience their uh, leap um, to utopia uh, through a collapse of social religion, which is not long living, they may be uh, able to understand us, and we will survive. Uh, Russia is the main protagonist of this process. Russia is not the territory of certain experiments, but the main organizing force of the global uh, process, its epicenter. Uh, we, uh, uh, we are here to raise the issue of Russian idea, sort of allegedly lost, but now look, uh, we should look for it like a, a new diagons. But uh, the matter is that none of the uh, modern processes stated in the 20th century, be that global war or collapse of the state, uh, socialist counter-revolution, uh, secular religion, uh, racist ideolo uh, ideologies, or forming of the uh, closed circuits in uh, scientific thinking. None of these processes has been closed and none of them has undergone its first uh, cri uh, critical uh, stage. The global war was um, went through the hot wars or uh, military wars of uh, empires to cold war of superpowers for destruction of certain states. The state um, 
the, the main social process of the new time has not been concluded yet, has not finished yet. The, it is continued on uh, certain scientific knowledge about social uh, processes. We, we start from uh, the history of new times to industrial revolution, sciences about nature, social revolutions, and so, uh, studies about socialism. The dream about uh, communism that was to be built in our country by 1980 uh, was replaced by the strive for utopia that should be uh, total, that is total democracy, that should have been uh, like uh, similar to that of uh, communism. But uh, the crisis of scientific uh, think, uh, thinking continues. Scientific thinking uh, gives us uh, understanding overly of atomized uh, part, uh, numerous uh, subjects, which can uh, we can uh, only conventionally call a scientific uh, uh, picture. But we are challenged now with uh, the scientific um, worldview. Uh, we are striving, uh, we see that there is a strive for um, global uh, high, um, hegemony. We see parallel that in the second part of the 20th century we see a slowdown of um, scientific um, revelation and there is a um, collapse of the post-industrial myth that uh, should be um, set off by a slowdown in the industrial uh, revolution of um, economies. We see that um, there is a gigantic discrepancy between economy and monetized societies between their uh, in their relationship money uh, has become f uh, f uh, is no longer an instrument of economic uh, management but is the uh, is is an instrument of uh, management of society the uh, superpower is being um, formed uh, their consciousness and behavior, behavior of individuals should be transferred to uh, to, uh, to uh, great uh, public systems and systems of their uh, activity. Well, that means that uh, results of individual in, uh, that uh, it becomes that the whole history prehistory of the classical states uh, should uh, be uh, rejected and its results destroyed. But we find ourselves in the epicenter of this, uh, in, on the crossroads of these processes. As a result of our, uh, as a result of that, Russia also find itself in the crossroads and the epicenter of sister, uh, history. Um, the implementation of Marxism became uh, also found itself in the epicenter. Russian post-Marxism developed as, as post-scientific uh, analysis of organized and artificial historical uh, process. Uh, we worked on the actual material. Uh, Germany became our uh, Russia's sparring partner in the history. That's why Russian-German school is unavoidable in, in the future. Uh, the first step of the new Russian philo uh, philosophy is the third one after Orthodox and uh, uh, Marxists. Uh, so the main uh, method is analysis of Marxist, uh, Marx and um, uh, as a method of um, Marxist abstraction. The method of ascension from abstract to specific was uh, discovered on the basis of Marx material uh, and implemented by Zinoviev. It is a method of constructing from any accessible, even empirical uh, realities, not only from political and economic. Zinoviev's method is uh, of constructing the system of complex knowledge of organic whole. It's the most important thing is application of dialectics as a logical utopia and considering of contradictions as a logical situation, uh, not something specific Marx abstract uh, the society um, as life of our society from economic reality. E econo uh, e economics was the first abstraction and it seemed the first uh, right step. To some extent it uh, 
turned outside down from it from within the historical uh, process but economic abstraction of society poli politics and history can could not become a, uh, could not identify the leading role of scientific uh, thinking in history of the new times it is uh, it was obstruct, uh, obst obstructed by capital economic um, economic it is, uh, well, it is power that is the most deeper inner relationship. Uh, absence of knowledge about power, and that is, uh, it, it means also about sozium in uh, Marxist uh, teaching, does not allow us to understand the nature of modern capitalism. Uh, classes uh, grow from uh, fr uh, from scientific. Mm, from the fight of uh, classes, but how it comes that one becomes the ruling class and the other submittant, that there is no answer to this question. Moscow logical circus as, uh, circle as well as Moscow methodological uh, circle, um, uh, Zinoviev and his uh, uh, disciple Grigory Shidravitsky and, uh, and their disciples worked out a method of dis ascension from abstract to concrete to specific. The systematic approach is necessary for uh, spread uh, dissemination uh, dissemination of hi the historic process and mm. This is something that we have already seen in, in the European practice uh, at the transit to the 21st century um, the Artificial attitude to a historical process is something that it is based on um, logical uh, sequence the logical types of uh, of limited uh, abstractions is something that was worked out by the Moscow Logical Circle. Uh, that is something that helps us to study not only logic, uh, the logic of uh, the reality of the whole, but also of parts and connections. Um, the demise of uh, the demise of history is also called a morphology of history. This is uh, superpower develops. De develops in society as activity and thought of activity. The main uh, challenge of state can be raised as a global problem and Russia and its uh, people cannot um, stand apart. Thank you. Thank you. So let us continue our conversation. I think that one of the most important statements made by Mr. Zinov is that we has proceeded to the age of planned history, which is no longer built by accident. This is one of um, the most important innovations proposed by Mr. Zinov and as one of such examples of planned or projected history. Thirdly was the Soviet project which was implemented in the Soviet Union, thanks to which Russia found itself in the focal point of the world historical process. And now I'd like to pass the floor to Mr. Tivkovich to continue our conversation. So I'm passing the floor to him. Mr. Serjan Tivkovich from Serbia, you're welcome. Can you hear me? First of all, uh, oh, there we are. Let me remind you that there is a comical group in London's West End. It's called the Reduced Shakespeare Company. And they perform all the works of William Shakespeare, the comedies, the tragedies, in one evening. And it's hilarious. So, since I have been kindly awarded by Mrs. Zinovieva seven and a half minutes, or merely five, instead of merely five, I will try to uh, summarize the geopolitical and cultural challenges that Russia faces in the 21st century at an even more frantic and hysterically hilarious pace than that of the reduced Shakespeare Company. The first point is that the West rather hates you guys. And uh, this is not a matter of uh, what you do or what you don't do. This is not a matter of uh, the reductio ad Hitlerum of uh, Vladimir Putin. Hitlerization is the usual tool. 
Milosevic as the new Hitler, Saddam as the new Hitler. Uh, you know, I think that uh, Adolf must be having a hearty uh, laugh wherever he may be, and I suspect it's not a very comfortable place, looking at all the emanations of, uh, uh, here we have the one from a Ukrainian cartoonist, rather clever, I should say. But the problem is that uh, NATO ex expansions after the collapse of USSR and the constant crises in Ukraine and Russia's as well as Putin's relentless stereotyping and demonization as witnessed by the coverage of the Sochi, Sochi Winter Olympics even before the Maidan started uh, points out the fact that there is a visceral Western elite class antipathy to Russia as such and the discourse of Russophobia was already fully developed at the time of the Crimean War in the 1850s and it was only going through different emanations and has been going ever since. The challenges that Russia faces from the West are existential, but they are not rationally based. They are fundamentally related to Russia's, uh, not related to Russia's actual policies, but to the essence of Russia's being. In order to avoid the tragedy, forget about our Western partners. When I hear that term, I want to reach for the gun. What partners? The partners respect each other. The partners give each other their due. The partners base their relationship on a give and take, and the partners tell truth to each other. The West is doing none of those things. But to understand the two key pillars of Western, and in particular Anglo-Russian Russophobia, you need to understand geopolitics and cultural ant antipathy. In geopolitics is the continuity of Halford Mackinder and Nicholas Spikeman to our own time. The heartland must be surrounded, it must be squeezed, and if at all possible, it must be chopped up into tiny little units, but in the end, uh, regardless of whether it's called Tsarist Russia or the USSR or the Russian Federation, it is the heartland that is the enemy. Cultural antipathy is even harder to understand because it's not rationally based. It is the perception of Russia as the ultimate other. All of the third world uh, deserves sympathy and respect under the precepts of political correctitude. And of course, who are we to say that the poetry of Bantus in sub-Saharan Africa or the tribes in Amazonia is any less valuable than Shakespeare's sonnets? But with Russia, no. With Russia, it is the non-identical identity of the closeness of the model that drives them crazy. Because the Russians can and should be, in their view, converted to the Western postmodernia after the regime change in Moscow, as per, per Ambassador McFall's stated intention, but Russia, damn it, refuses to do so. And what the heck are we to do but to insist that the Russians are bad for as long as they persist in not succumbing to the Western postmodern individualistic atomized model of postmodern existence. But therefore, understand that there is no compromise. You cannot and will not appease them. Every step backwards, every gesture of conciliation will be interpreted as a sign of weakness and as a proof that the screws need to be tightened further. We are looking at the continuity of geopolitics in Ukraine. The Ukraine has always been the glittering prize in the business of surrounding Russia and uh, applying the anaconda strategy of Nicholas Spike, as Nicholas Spikeman would have called it. Uh, the current Drangna Hosten, and we've seen them before, the Teutonic Knights, the Poles at the times of trouble, Napoleon, the Kaiser, Barbarossa, and of course today we are witnessing the latest emanation in the strategy of a, sea, uh, of a major sea power. In the past, it used to be the British Empire, now it's the United States, to see Russia pushed into the depths of geopolitical 
interior of the heartland. But there is a comforting thought that the United States is on the verge of imperial overreach. Imperial overreach has doomed various empires in the past. The Spanish Empire under Philip II was the most powerful country in the world, and within 50 years, by the end of the 30-year war, it, was, it descended to number five. Why? Because it wanted to fight the Turks at Lepanto, it wanted to put together a great armada against England, it wanted to quell the rebellion in the Netherlands, and it wanted to play a prominent role in the Thirty Year War. And in the end, it didn't do anything well. Likewise, the British Empire uh, overreached itself, not to mention the Kaiserreich and, of course, the insane non-strategy of the Third Reich. When you see and hear American analysts and American politicians saying that Kyrgyzstan is a vital U.S. interest, that Moldova is a vital U.S. interest, and then when you see the insanity known as Obama's defense strategic guidance, that enduring national interest of the United States is to maintain the unparalleled U.S. military superiority ad infinitum, ready I quote, for the full range of contingencies and threats across the globe, then we know we are dealing with a pretty little insanity. And that's why I think that the notion of guided history or directed history is incorrect, because there are too many unknowns in the equation, and they cannot keep the Rubik Cube with ever-expanding complexity resolved and it is going to hit them like a boomerang. I am not going to read the specific policy recommendations. I simply uh, suffice to say, and uh, the interested ones may copy uh, the PowerPoint from, from uh, our technicians here. Suffice to say that the, uh, the Russian response to the provocation of Ukraine the challenge of Ukraine, has been insufficient. In the first place, it should never have happened. Russia's intelligence and security services should never have allowed Maidan to happen. The United States would never have allowed it in Ottawa or in Mexico City. And now that it has happened, there are all kinds of things that can be done, but when it comes to the strategic response, the main thing is to de-dollarize the global financial system. It can and should be done. And Russia should start by saying that it's selling its treasury bills and it will never buy them again and by 2020 will conduct its external trade, especially in oil and gas, in a basket of currencies that will not include the dollar. But above all, shake off the still persisting myth of Western and in particular American invincibility. And that's where I think almost a decade after his de death, Zinoviev might have modified some of his writings in which you get the impression that the Western policymakers are capable of infinitely complex planning. Well, their plans are in fact collapsing. Uh, the US society is a failed society. It is increasingly fragmented, increasingly atomized, and for all uh, the myths of exceptionalism of an indispensable nation, it is a society in which for the first time since its beginning on the shores of Roanoke in Virginia in the first decade of the 17th century, the present generation does not believe that their children and grand grandchildren will be better off than they are. Encourage Washingtonian overreach. Yes, by all means, conduct a well-structured, grand strategy that will bring the United States into ever more commitments, into ever more hotspots, whether it's in the crescent of instability from North Africa to Iran and uh, Pakistan, whether it's in South China Sea or in Eastern Europe. And consider the implications of asymmetric warfare, which, uh, as we've seen in Iraq, Afghanistan, and lately with ISIS, uh, shows the limits of American military capabilities. 
actively encourage the imposition of financial limitations on U.S. grant strategy, above all, de-dollarization. It can and should and must be done for the sake of the United States as well as the rest of the world. And once again, never again use the term our Western partners. Russia can, must and will <coughs> avoid the, the tragedy of the 20th, 20th century in the 21st. It is what Russia owes to herself and to the rest of the world, including Serbia, to which I've returned from the United States because life is too short. Thank you. Thank you so much. Silly, it's very difficult to describe everything within five minutes. When Leibitz was asked to come to France to read a lecture in uh, 10 minutes and to describe his philosophy in five minutes, and uh, he said, I'm ready to learn French by that time, but it's very difficult to outline my philosophy within 10 or five minutes. So I'd like to pass the floor to Mr. Soloduchin. Dear colleagues, considering certainly our time limits because we're a little bit behind the schedule. I agree with the idea that one of uh, the biggest achievements of Mr. Zunov, this is his statement that in the 20th century, especially in the second half of the 20th century, the historical process, uh, the evolution of the mankind acquired a directed, planned, and projected nature, or guided nature. But he also warned that at different uh, historical stretches or legs, uh, this or that component may prevail. Today, as was stressed by Mr. Putin in his speech at the Valde Club meeting, the world lives through the period when it would make sense to speak about more chaos, turbulence in its development. There are certain attempts to explain this process in the framework of the so-called concept of Cold War, meaning that we are getting back to the Cold War period. I don't think that this scheme, this uh, philosophy would be fruitful or would make sense. It is rather simplified. Why? Because even in the most critical part of the Cold War, the parties could come to terms, could uh, set an agreement. Let me remind you that uh, there were such, an ag such agreements as, for instance, the nuclear test ban treaty, the nuclear arms reduction, the START 1, START 2 treaties, the uh, missile defense treaty, Helsinki Accords, the detente policy. Nothing like this happens today. The West doesn't want to hear us and doesn't listen to us. And we see no messages from the West that it is ready to understand or at least to listen to the Russian position, to the Russian stand. And at the same time, we see enormous uh, informational warfare and Russian experts certainly keep track of this process, and I would like to quote some very uh, curious facts for the last six months. Uh, the ratio of uh, uh, propagandistic uh, uh, articles per one uh, moderate publication is 30 to 1. And in Germany, for instance, it is even 40 or 50 to 1. Cold War was a standoff, sometimes a very tough standoff, between some opposite public and social systems, meaning a standoff between different uh, opposite set of values, principles, cultures, etc. Right now, Russia is a country which is based on the so-called uh, European values. You can open the Constitution and look at two paragraphs, and you will see the whole set of principles which serve as the foundation for all the democratic European nations. So this is the human rights, the uh, rule of law, the market economy, etc., etc. But at the same time, the West 
uses all kinds of uh, weapons, but the military force to corner Russia. So it means that it doesn't make sense to speak about the Cold War because we are facing an absolutely new phenomena. And uh, Mr. Zinoyev dubbed it uh, the Russian tragedy, not a strife, but a strategy of the West, a well thought strategy of the West to corner Russia, to force it to the outskirts of the history, to remove it from the world, Sinto from the world arena as an independent force or power. Do we really have necessary resources to cope with those uh, repercussions? An outstanding German philosopher, Karl Jaspers, introduced the notion of axial time. Not all the uh, philosophers share this um, notion, this definition, but actually it would allow us to understand something about our world. Axial time, this is the period from the 800s to 200s years of uh, after Christ, when the notion of history emerged as the notion of a single period. And uh, one of the actors of uh, this actual time was uh, Confucius, uh, India with Buddha. That's when prophets in Palestine started their lectures. Ratustra in Zarastan started saying that the world is the permanent combat between the evil and the good. And finally, the philosophers, philosophies embodied by Plato, by Fukidite, Aristotle, etc. This potential, this uh, uh, pulse which was given by the actual time after the World War II, when the uh, super society of the West was established, is there no longer is no longer there, we see that uh, the technologies, uh, the humanitarian components of the historical processes are no longer important. And we see that uh, mankind, as uh, as certain individuals who can think, is endangered. And I do believe that the emergence of communism in the Soviet Union was, in my opinion, the very first message that mankind needs a new axial time, new bearings, new guidelines, new principles, new incentives. Uh, Soviet Union existed for no more than 70 years, but w within that time it managed to do a lot. A backward uh, nation became number one or two in terms of the technologies. Uh, it even equaled the United States um, in terms of the economic potential. It created new system of values, a new form of democracy, and many other things. And finally, today many developed capitalist nations or socialist nations or Western powers may uh, boast uh, welfare and uh, social security. This is an indirect uh, consequence of uh, the Soviet Union, because the existence of the Soviet project certainly contributed a lot to the socialist evolution, meaning that it contributed to the competition. After the uh, disintegration of the Soviet Union, this element uh, fell out of the process for some time, because the imposition of the concept of the unipolar world, and this, in essence, is the continuation of of the second or the third wave or stage of the Russian tra tra tragedy. So the fight of Russia against unipolar world, against expansion of the Western super society, is also a step in the direction of creating a new axial time. 
Will that be connected with a communist project or not? It's difficult to say now, but not in the form that it used to exist in the Soviet Union. Although we cannot say for sure that there is no return to communism, the category of impossibility exists only in nature and in precise uh, sciences. And as for society, we know that uh, impossibility is something that is very relative, and uh, we should be very cautious about that, conservative about that. Uh, will there be a new utopia? Will that be a communist project again or not? But that's something that, uh, and the only country that is capable of presenting such utopia to the world is Russia, because of certain reasons, because of its ex experience in the 20th century and in the 21st century, and because of its special organization of the Russian mentality, and also because of what Dostoevsky said, um, holistic or universal response or to just no matter what happens in the world, every uh, Russian uh, soul responds to that as something that is dear to it and close to it. So, and I'm sure that such a new project will come into form. Thank you very much, Mr. Saladuhin. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to give the floor to uh, Signora Chiesa. And uh, I invite you to observe the time limits. Well, during five minutes, uh, I think that uh, it's enough only just for one idea to present to you. I believe that it's not incidental that our today's discussion coincides with uh, uh, what uh, Vladimir Pu President Putin said at the Valdai Club. Uh, that sounds like a continuation of the Valdai Club. I am even uh, actually surprised by this co uh, coincidence. So, so what we are talking about is the turn of the history. I believe that Professor Zinoviev was a prophet to a certain extent. I, I would like to present just one point briefly. There are partners in the West, but, well, there are a, a lot of them. Uh, the intellectual elites of the West understand, uh, I, I don't say, mean political elite, but intellectual elite. Well, that is something non-existent already. It doesn't exist as a free uh, group of people. Uh, there is a very small group of people that can be uh, could, uh, called uh, the master of the universe. They are bankers, virtually, who run, the, uh, run all institutions. And here we see the prophecy um, of uh, Professor Zinoviev coming uh, true. We see that in uh, European Commission, in all, uh, in uh, the IMF and uh, World Bank, and uh, they, uh, they're those who run the world in the uh, Senate, in the, uh, Obama's uh, administration, etc. But to my mind, they are people. These are people who are sitting too high. Uh, uh, in the top, and they are unreachable. We can only fight uh, with them, but as for the rest, we can try to come to terms with them. Uh, here I heard uh, President uh, Putin's uh, ideas, and they sounded quite uh, reasonable for them. Um, well, we can try to speak with Europe, because it, uh, Europe is not free. Uh, today we uh, awarded uh, the Snowden's award today. I think that that's right. Uh, there is not a single European leader who can take a decision on his or her own, single-mindedly, uh, because their telephone lines are uh, tapped, and uh, that is all well known. And, uh, so, and uh, what I'd like to say in conclusion that uh, the issue of universal values that uh, was just voiced by the previous speaker, well, it's if we you look at universal values when uh, the population of 
of the uh, planet is 1.3 billion of people as early the 20th century, but it's quite a different thing when you look at the planet with 7 billion inhabitants. That means that our, in inverted commas, universal values are not universal at all. The predominant uh, part of the world does not share these universal values. The predominant part of the world, out of the 7 billion people, they do not share these universal, so-called universal values. Why? Again, uh, Professor Zinove was right, because we're at some intermediate stage of our history uh, of uh, humanity. Uh, during the 20th century, uh, the Western ideas dominated because the West was the strongest, both military and economical. But now, at the end of the 20th century, uh, one thing became obvious, although that was not mentioned. And I think that Zinoviev, uh, Zinoviev was about to say that. Uh, it was the end of the era of trust. That is, the end of uh, the era of uh, an, uh, enormous resources. That's where the empire demises. And, that, and the end of the uh, American empire is about that. Just continuous development of um, the planet is not possible. So during the 21st century, that will something uh, that uh, some, uh, this will never happen. Uh, so we s that's something that we see, and it will not be like that. We know that from our experience. Again, because Zinoviev was a prophet, so we see that well. Well, there are people who can see the future. Yes, we can see the future now, unlike other civilizations, unlike previous civilizations. That's why we know that this world is doomed for failure, is doomed to failure at the very end of it. Well, Russia is a very serious obstacle for further domination of Western principles. This is the only obstacle that is that has enormous intellectual force or experience. That's why this obstacle should be removed from the political chain so that the master uh, the masters of the universe want to do. That is a very decisive moment for them, either now or never. Uh, well, does, has Russia resources for that? That's still an open question, unfortunately. It depends on many factors. But I believe, and here I'd like to conclude, that Russia on its own will not withstand. Russia has resources, has nat natural, um, all necessary resources, but the world is enormous. So the masters of the world are not more than a thousand uh, people. So we should take into account, to my view, Russia can manage that, can handle the situation if it sets up an enormous economic and political alliance. That means a wave of informational war which has not been waged by Russia yet, has not been re uh, triggered by Russia yet. Thank you very much, Professor Keza. And now I'd like to give the floor to uh, Maxim Lavrentiev to continue our discussion. I was, um, while well, listening to our speakers speaking about uh, politics, uh, that's something that I would not continue, continue in the same line. I absolutely agree with everything that was said before me. That's part of our reality. Uh, and uh, you, one should not be a great thinker to see the simple things that are happening in this uh, reality in Russia and in connection with Russia. But what like to focus on is uh, what is dear to my heart as a, uh, as a writing person. I'd like to speak more about the problems of Russian, challenges of Russian uh, culture and uh, sort of 
struggle, fight between the Western expansion and opposition to it by Russian culture. Mr. Uh, Kieza said that we have not triggered our uh, political attack yet, uh, launched it, and, but I should say that we have not started our um, cultural uh, attack as, uh, either, although we have all p necessary potential for that. You may have be aware that uh, the State Department of the United States uh, carries out uh, several various uh, cultural programs in uh, Russia in particular. For instance, uh, some young writers uh, have uh, uh, are given opportunities to live uh, abroad in Europe or in the United States in particular. On the one hand, that's, well, what can be better than a natural uh, cult uh, dialogue of cultures? But what is interesting, if uh, this is uh, some uh, some uh, encouraged, a sort of a cultural mission, the officials that are responsible for such uh, cultural programs, uh, they uh, do some very thorough, thorough screening, ideological screening of those people who seem to be worthy uh, for, of um, participation in these programs and worthy of uh, being involved. Um, While well, postmodernism was mentioned here, it has some cultural content as well. In cu cu culture, postmodernism means destruction of the traditional uh, f values and uh, basis. Uh, if uh, s some personalities, uh, if some personalities manifest this. Uh, violation of traditions, then the, the Western institutions, and in particular the State Department, uh, take great interest in them and take these people under their protection. Why? I believe that that's done with uh, one obvious uh, thing. Uh, fighting Russia, one of the main components and main, main tools is is found in culture. We can survive uh, an economic crisis. We can, but erosion of a national identity happens when Russian culture, based on its traditions, and is uh, is uh, exposed and uh, experiences some pressure from um, the global monster, by the global monster. Well, I don't want to be an... I don't want to, uh, to speak that much in favor of isolation. Uh, isolation and not, I don't want to be a prophet of isolation. I don't want to uh, say that uh, to be like those who say that he who plays jazz today will sell his motherhood tomorrow. But uh, I'm not one of those who say this. But we see that those who have uh, been communicators, uh, channels of rock music for a number of years in Russia are now not only go to Ukraine to sing songs there, which is good, and let them, well, it's something that should be done, and uh, people of art should not be accused of that, but the same people say that there is no such notion as Russian civilization, and this is a, an absolutely different thing. This is something that uh, is not uh, related di directly with the um, with the art that they create, but how can we oppose this uh, pressure, which is definitely taking place? I think that we need to understand that state 
uh, institutions should support Russian culture. Unfortunately, this support is done um, sporadically, just uh, not regularly. I do not know whether there is a program that exists in the um, uh, in uh, the country. Well, for instance, the year to, uh, 2015 was uh, called the year of uh, literature, but how the government, uh, the state, will help classical literature now? Not the classical literature that is part of our history. Well, we still have uh, Russian realism. We have the school of classical Russian realism, be that in um, fiction, in poetry. We have good uh, tradition of Russian criticism literature uh, criticism that uh, works in this direction, but without uh, governmental support in art, in traditional art, we will not, uh, we will not uh, be able to do much. Thank you. So the first round of discussion uh, is over, so I'd like to invite um, those who are, sit here uh, to give their comments or uh, just ask questions if they have any. We have, we see, uh, we have assistants here with microphones, so we will ask them to please introduce yourself. Uh, and Ilkevich uh, Igor, uh, member of the coordinating uh, um, committee of the State uh, Duma. I would like to say that Alexander Zinoviev uh, did a very important thing. The, this panel discussion on Russian tragedy is very important because it is true that today we're experiencing this uh, in full flow, in full scope. The, the, say, uh, the tragedy that happened during the First World War uh, because of imperials that, could, uh, that existed then could not meet the challenges of business then, uh, we see uh, that the strategic uh, fight is now, uh, now going on for resources. Look at all the, re uh, the revolutions that lo were launched beginning with 2011. Uh, I warned, actually, had warned about that uh, back in 2006. We see that all these wars were triggered against uh, 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 nations with resources. We, s we know that uh, some powers are running out of natural resources, and only through the development of Russian mentality, Russian thinking, we can um, avoid uh, we can avoid the tragedy that Alexander Zinoviev warned us against. Some more comments are invited to the right of me. Again, I will ask you to give a very short comment. Good afternoon, dear uh, friends and colleagues uh, of Alexander Zinov. I have a suggestion. Much can be said about Alexander Zinoviev, but at the same time, we can say very little. Uh, we we, ca we don't have much time to be very to to speak much. It is an amazing person, an amazing thinker of the modern world, and I am proud of the fact that Alexander Zinoviev spoke uh, often. Uh, at uh, the Institute of Philosophy uh, that I have the honor of uh, chairing and heading. In his presentations, in his lectures, he always shared his optimism with, me, uh, with us and his knowledge. The seminar that we run gives tribute to Alexander Zinoviev uh, for the contribution in sociology, log uh, philosophy, and uh, we uh, made a decision, and I want you to support our uh, decision. Uh, stemming from the 
interesting nature of the issues that we discuss here, and uh, Zinoviev was an inter uh, it was was an internationalist or the man of the world in the Socrative uh, understanding of it. So that would be a good uh, um, description of him. So I suggest that we uh, pass a decision of. of uh, as following, just uh, apply to certain um, governmental bodies or return to the president, to the ministry of, uh, to, to, to respective ministries uh, with the request to open an international state university of uh, nations and national relationship. You may know that quite recently the president spoke on uh, the issues on Ukraine. Uh, was very brief, uh, but very precise, saying that the most important uh, uh, reason of all of the events in Ukraine is is estrangement of our peoples. And uh, so this, uh, I believe, uh, this issue, I believe, requires a certain study because during the times of the Soviet Union there was something that was overlooked. I mean, the relationship between nations and ethnic groups. And uh, that's why we see the results of that. Uh, so one, one other brief suggestion, if you permit. Uh, the institute that I had, Institute of Philosophy, was uh, the uh, the main forged uh, forged the main weapon that helped us to uh, to fight and to, to take over global fascism. That was the ideology that nobody uh, abolished. So that's something that cannot be abolished. The so ideology, worldview, is something that stays forever. So philosophy was something that was uh, forged uh, during the Soviet times, and this institute is uh, being re uh, just moved out of its uh, of its premises, and that's why I appeal to you uh, and I invite you to say that this was a wrongful decision. Thank you. Thank you so much. Certainly we'll all try to protect the Institute of Philosophy. I'm uh, Nicholas Buchti from Donbass. I have a question to the moderators. A lot has been done about the philosophy of ideas, of thoughts, and philosophy of actions is a little bit lagging behind. Can you just in few bullet points tell us why the philosophy of actions is always lagging behind the philosophy of thoughts, of ideas, even if we take, for instance, the Russian philosophy? And if we look at the um, Russian tragedy through the prism of global processes, let me dare answer this question. I think that it makes sense that even the public wisdom says that you should first think and then act. It is actually um, that uh, actions should follow the thoughts. And it would be disaster if it would be vice versa. Thank you. I'm first deputy chairman of uh, the International Relations Committee in State Duma, and let me comment and rather answer the previous question what Mr. Chiesa said and what uh, Maxim Lavrentiev told us. Certain actions should be taken in the informational area, in the cultural areas, but who should do that? Certainly the intellectual thoughts are doing that and then this is the turn of the public institutions and as a politician I has I have to state that not only we lag behind but sometimes we are under pressure of the lobby including the financial lobby which takes certain decisions and this is the financial lobby which takes decisions here too in Russia two examples 
One example is quite recent, for instance, last week the State Duma approved of the next three-year budget where the culture and education not get the same amount of funds, but the funding would be diminished dramatically. And we're speaking about the new Russian world, about Ukraine, about our compatriots who are living there, and certain hearings were held in the Security Council of Russia two and a half years ago. Then a resolution by the government was adopted, and probably you heard about that, and you heard a lot about the soft power, and it should be supported by certain financial means in order to develop the Russian language, to arrange for certain courses of the Russian language. Uh, certainly the Russian teachers have to be paid, so this program was um, adopted, but it was uh, uh, reduced to zero by the Minister of Finance last year. And I asked this question to Mr. Siluanov. I talked to Deputy Ministers about that, and I got a response that this is how it happened. This program is not important, and uh, what is going on right now in Ukraine, in other parts of the Russian world, this is done by influential forces which must mind certain political decisions, and we have to understand that, and we have to counter that jointly. Thank you. Thank you. And this would be the last presentation or statement in this panel discussion, because we'll have to break for lunch. And next panel, which will start at 3 p.m., will not have any introduction parts, and we'll have more time to discuss. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Maria Ramos. I'm an ambassador of Bolivia in Russia, and thank you so much for your invitation. The presentations were brilliant, but I look at the title, The Russian Tragedy, and certainly this is arbitrary statement whether the tragedy is purely Russian. What is going on here in Russia? Those attempts to punish Russia, to prosecute Russia, certainly these are not just a set of individual cases, and I will not go into further detail about that, but we have to look at what is going on in the world in general. I think that we have to hear more about Russia around the world, you have to move more, you have to travel a lot, and just to see that Russia has a lot of friends around the world, just people know not too much about Russia. And uh, such conferences, such events should be held not just here in Moscow. And if you have money to travel, if you have money to speak Spanish, to speak English, you have to travel. We want to hear more about Russia. And again, I would like to thank you for a very interesting panel discussion. Thank you. Just a brief comment. As a reporter, as a Western reporter, I can tell you that during the Ukrainian crisis, the Russian positions were striking out. 500 million people knew nothing about what was uh, what was it about? Just for many months, the voice of Russia was excluded. We all heard only the voice of America. And this is the most important statement. Uh, for instance, in Italy, in Germany, or in France, there is no any channel which would tell the truth. America won because it built a system of building ideas, of building thoughts in the mass consciousness. During the Cold War, we saw the standoff between two 
ideologies between two systems. And right now, this is absolutely unilateral. I want you to know that, that in the West there is no channel of truth which would tell us really true information about the fight between people. So really it is very important that Russia should create and establish the channels, informational channels, which would give us other information, other ideas. Thank you so much. And let us make a break for lunch for 30 minutes. And we'll reconvene at 3.05, at 5 minutes to 4. And I think that we'll continue our work in the presidential hall, not here. Thank you.